Hey guys, if you're watching this, you've probably been in a situation where you met an attractive woman and you wanted to ask for her phone number, but you didn't know how without sounding like a creep. Well, you're not alone and it's not your fault. In today's world of hashtag me too and fourth wave feminists, it can be terrifying just to approach a woman, never mind ask for her phone number. Sweaty palms, racing heartbeat, foggy thinking, and not knowing what you're supposed to say, well, it's no wonder you feel nervous or awkward. But even though it can be nerve wracking to approach a woman and, and then ask for her phone number, it is an essential part of the dating process because despite all those feminists out there, 86% of women still prefer for a man to initiate because no matter how much modern feminism tries to brainwash women, it can't fool our biology. So if you are one of the few men still willing to initiate, you will actually be one of the few men getting more phone numbers and more dates. And no matter what age you are, asking for her phone number doesn't have to be intimidating. In this video, you'll learn my top nine tips and tricks for how to naturally know what to say and what not to say, not sound like every other pickup artist who's approached her, end the conversation while leaving her wanting more, and get her phone number naturally with ease. If you're new to my channel, I help men decode women so you can find, attract, and keep your keeper. My videos are for you if you know that while modern women definitely need to learn and appreciate a lot more about men, you can only do what you can do. Welcome to Just the Tip. Let's get started. Number one, be confident and straightforward. Being confident and straightforward is important to women because it shows that you can take charge and be assertive. Women respond positively to a man who's confident in himself and his intentions. And being straightforward also shows her you respect her time and aren't playing games. So walk up to her with your head held high, smile warmly, make eye contact. Example of what not to say. This is really random, but if she's under 30, 25 for sure, she has heard this before because it's one of the most common openers pickup artists suggest using. I've even heard it and I'm old. You're better off to use something more genuine and situationally relevant. Say this instead. Hey, I saw you and I thought you looked like a nice person. So I thought I'd come over and say, hi, mind if I sit down? My name's JP. This one actually happened to me many years ago when I was sitting alone in a public park reading a book. Why it's good? Well, people tend to automatically want to live up to positive expectations of us. How could I possibly say no to him sitting down when he just called me a nice person? Now, of course, some women will say no, but you'll probably get a much gentler rejection. Then he followed up with, what are you reading? Which allowed for a natural conversation to unfold. Or you might use a more direct approach like, hi, I saw you and couldn't help but come over and introduce myself. My name's JP. How are you? Now, this is a bold, honest approach that is a bit risky if she hasn't shown clear signs of interest. But if she's on the fence, it can actually push her over the fence into becoming more interested, at least more curious. Reminder and key point, women's biology, our bodies can't help but respond positively to a man's confidence and assertiveness as long as it's respectful. Now, some dating coaches suggest you ask for her name after you've introduced yourself. However, it can be better to wait to see if she offers her name because that will help you gauge her level of interest in you. She may offer her name right away, in which case she might simply be polite or maybe she is attracted to you, or she may offer it later in the conversation and that's definitely a clue that she is more interested or at least curious. As well, not asking for her name right away is less intrusive. And of course, when you do learn her name, you will want to sprinkle it into the conversation because it's her favorite word in the whole world. At the same time, you don't want to intimidate her too much, which brings us to tip number two, make her feel safe. As I've said in many other videos, women's primary need is to feel safe. So don't box her in or block her exits. Another great way of making her feel safe is by disclosing you only have a few minutes. This means she doesn't have to engage in a long conversation with you when she doesn't even know if she's interested in a conversation with you. Example, don't say this. I've got to meet a friend. We go rock climbing every week. We usually meet on Wednesdays, blah, blah, blah. She doesn't know you well enough to care about the details of your life and it's already evidence of a longer conversation. Instead, say this. I only have a few minutes, but I wanted to meet you. Clear, 
direct, to the point, and supportive of its own meaning. A short conversation. And now that you've made her feel at ease, it'll be easier to ease in to the next tip. Tip number three, be casual. Don't make it a big deal or put too much pressure on the situation. Key point, women mirror your feelings. Start with some small talk before easing into asking for her phone number. Make her feel comfortable, not like she's being put on the spot. Example, don't say this. Oh, hey, I gotta go, but can I get your number? Um, no. Unless she's 110% into you, this is way too pushy. Instead, say this. What are we reading today? What are we drinking today? What are we shopping for today? The we makes this question cheeky and familiar. Then you can casually and playfully talk about that topic. It can be anything to do with the situation, surroundings, or something unusual about her if it's obvious. Maybe she's carrying a stack of books, or she's got a puppy, or a bunch of shopping bags, or just one shopping bag. Being casual ties into tip number four, make a connection. Before you ask for her number, it's important that you build some rapport with her to show her that you're actually interested in her as a person and not just a number. Women want to feel seen, heard, and valued, and making a connection with her shows that you actually do want to get to know her. You can do this by adding more meaningful questions to your conversation. Example, what made you decide to pick up a book on narcissists? Should I be concerned? What makes this your favorite coffee shop? Me, I love the atmosphere. Are you a woman who loves finding the perfect gift for someone or does it stress you out? These questions are still on topic, but a little bit more intimate and personal and delve more into her personality and motivations. Key point. When you approach a woman, she automatically already knows you're physically attracted to her. So making a real connection actually ties into tip number five. Be genuine. Don't use cheesy pickup lines or try to be someone you're not. Be the real quirky you and let your true personality shine through. This is why you need to be careful using the guessing game. A lot of pickup artists and dating coaches both suggest using the guessing game as a way to be playful and build sexual attention. And it can work sometimes. However, again, if she's under 25 or 30, especially if she's beautiful, she's definitely experienced this before, especially with pickup artists, and it's going to come across as not genuine. Now, some of you are asking, what is the guessing game? Well, glad you asked. Basically, it's when you ask her a question about herself, and before she answers, you take a stab at what the answer might be. Example, what are you drinking? Wait, let me guess. It's a uh, non-fat, low-foam... Cappuccino. That's the kind of girl you are. Am I right? Again, this can work sometimes, but if she's heard it before, it's definitely going to come across as not a genuine and it's going to feel like a pickup line. If she hasn't heard it before, then she might laugh or play along. However, if you're simply genuine and authentic, you don't need to use standard lines or pickup tactics, and you'll be much more likely to get her phone number. Now, the next tip should be obvious, but isn't always. Number six, be respectful. It's important to be respectful when you're chatting with a woman because it shows you value her boundaries. Women want to feel safe and comfortable. So when you respect her and those around you, it shows that you're someone she can trust. Don't make inappropriate statements or gestures or be rude to the people around you, whether they're staff or other customers. And of course, here's the one that's not so obvious. Make sure you're actually actively listening to her and not distracted by other people or your phone. A great way to show you're actively listening is to paraphrase, not parrot phrase, something she said. Example, she says, I always get a decaf brevet latte. You say, so you always get a decaf brevet latte? That's parrot phrasing and sounds awkward. Instead say, always? Do you get the zoomies if you drink high octane? Active listening also means you're fully present, not in your head trying to think of the next witty thing to say. If you show her you respect her, she'll be more interested in you and it'll be far more natural for her to want to give you her number. And this brings us to tip number seven, have a reason to exchange numbers. It's important to end the conversation before it starts getting boring. Wingman motto, always leave them wanting more. So when you've built up some rapport with her and since she's gained some interest in you, that's when you want to wind down the conversation and skedaddle. If she seems more relaxed or she's laughing more easily or she's asking you personal questions about yourself, that can be a sign of interest. So you want to have your reason ready so you're not stumbling at the time when you want to ask for her number. If it's gone really well, maybe you want to take her on a date. If you're not quite sure yet, but maybe you've discovered some common interests, maybe that's something you'd like to explore together. And if you've had a pleasant interaction, it is best to assume she wants you to ask for her phone number. So ask. 
Which brings us to tip number eight. Use the assumptive close. Remember, a woman wants to follow your lead when you act with certainty. Example, don't say this. Um, do, do you mind if I get your number? Asking this way sounds weak and uncertain. Not sexy. Reminder, women mirror your feelings about you. If you're hesitant, she's hesitant. Also, best not to say, um, can I, can, can I give you my number? Same thing. Not assertive. But also, it leaves the ball in her court. And while you may think this is a good thing, it's actually not. Because of course, this means she has to initiate reaching out to you. Remember, 86% of women don't want to be the initiator. And key point, if she has to be the initiator, she'll be less likely to reach out if she's sort of on the fence. Because if she reaches out, what does that say? It says, I'm interested. When she might not be yet, women and men are different in how they develop interest in each other for long-term relationships. You know right away if you like her and you're attracted to her. Women are not that way when it comes to long-term relationships. So if she has to reach out to you, then she's automatically going to be putting the brakes on to make sure you don't think she's more interested than she is. You want to make it easy for her to flow into interest, which means you need to be the one reaching out first. So wherever possible, it's always better for you to get her number and to initiate conversation. Now, if she won't give you her number or she says and she never gives out her phone number, then sure, give her your number, but just don't have high expectations unless there's a high interest on her part. Instead, say this, ah, I've got to go, I'm late, but I'd like to see you again. Let me get your number. You can tell me more about this narcissist book. As you say this, you're getting your phone out and opening to a new contact. By leading with an assumption, you make it easier for her to follow along and to participate. Then you hand her your phone and ask her to put her information in there. This also ensures you're gonna get the correct spelling of her name and her digits if you're really nervous about typing those in. Now she insists that you give her your phone number because she doesn't wanna give her number. Enter your phone number with your name as something fun associated with where you just met. Maybe it's cute man at coffee shop, Tom, wink, grocery store, park, wherever. Okay, now when should you follow up? My answer might surprise you. Number nine, follow up. Once you have her number, it's important to follow up in a timely manner so she knows you're genuine and not playing silly games. Of course, you don't want to come across as too eager. So what's a guy to do? You text her right away. The sooner, the better. What? I know, other coaches and pickup artists say wait a few days and then message. Now that's gamey, like venison or maybe moose. Anyway, instead, I suggest you text her right away, right there with her if the situation allows for it, or at minimum within a few minutes of leaving her. Key point, the reason you wanna do it right away is because you're obviously going to be thinking about her at this moment because you just had a conversation, so it doesn't come across as overly needy, eager, or desperate. You've initiated, now the ball's in her court. And how quickly she replies, can help you gauge her level of interest. Example, you text her, great chatting with you, Ashley, enjoy your decaf, Tom, wink. Or enjoy your birthday party, or enjoy your book. You might even say, Tom, not an arc. Now don't get into another conversation right away because that will seem too eager. Remember, you've got somewhere to go, you've got somewhere to be, you have a life. What's the wingman motto? Always leave them wanting more, right? If she doesn't reply, then message her again in three to five days. I wouldn't say wait seven to 10 days unless you're actually extremely busy or leaving town or something. And if she does reply, then pick up the conversation again later in the day or the next morning. Leaving her wanting more means giving her enough to want more. Okay, now since you've stuck with me this long, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip on closing the deal. Don't get into endless texting conversations. That gets dull really fast. Have a few conversations and then close for getting together again. In three to five days. Example, don't say this. Do you want to get together again soon? Weak, uncertain. Instead, say this. What are you doing Thursday at 7 p.m.? Do you like ice cream? That's strong, certain, and assertive without being overly aggressive. And if you feel overwhelmed with all of these steps, just start with the first one that you're not comfortable with and practice that until you're comfortable. Then move on to the next one. No one learned anything all at once. With these tips, you'll be able to approach and talk to an attractive woman and get her number with natural confidence and ease. If you want more texting tips, then you're gonna to wanna to watch some of the videos in my texting playlist. And if you want a step-by-step -step guide for how to feel and be 
more competent and confident with women, then you're going to want to get and do the homework in my Wake Up to Love program. Thanks for being here. God bless.